थैंक यू निमाई सर एंड एंटायर टीम शर्मा जी एंड विश्व भारती सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी वाइस चांसलर फॉर गिविंग विद इस स्कोप और अपॉर्चुनिटी टू एक्चुअली डेलीबरेट द नॉलेज विच आई हैव एंड दिस इज वेरी शॉर्ट टाइम एंड आई विल ट्राई टू बेसिकली ब्रीफ अबाउट दैट ऑटोमेशन ओपन सोर्स ऑटोमेशन सोल्यूशन and uh, briefly i will describe about uh, various features which is uh, available in uh, koha software basically the advanced features so you can uh, make yourself familiar with uh, this software so i have just uh, uh, sharma ji am i audible sir yes sir absolutely fine okay okay so just a small ppt i will not take time uh, much time in ppt so i yes, hope sir, my uh, this ppt is visible yes sir yes sir payment so this is open source i think uh, yesterday or in during this session you will uh, much you will be able to much aware about what open source software is basically when the source code is open any of the public can able to modify the source code of the software then that's uh, called as, as open source software and remember that free software and open source software is different free you may not be able to view that uh, open uh, coding coding you may not be able to modify the coding but in open source software you will be able to modify this basic codes as per your local requirement so that is the philosophy of open source software Any, anybody can have access of that uh, open source uh, code and uh, modify it edit it and use it redistribute it so now ilms koha uh, i will let you know what some of the ilms which is open source in uh, available in public domain in new genlib you may be aware it's a uh, or indian origin and koha you all are aware then abcd evergreen open biblio php mydbin etc are the open source integrated library management software one small thing i would like to highlight here why we call it as a integrated library management software actually a lot of you earlier uh, in the beginning of uh, automation you might be aware that cds ics was there and similarly some of the softwares were there but uh, they were able to perform only one task cds ics for storage and retrieval of information no circulation and all this but some software has been made in foreign like australia for only circulation purpose so different different module different different soft softwares were there but later on <laughs> integrated library management software came means all the features like uh, circulation storage of information cataloging acquisition periodical management opac all those these is, uh, modules has been integrated into the one software so if we are calling it as a integrated library management software so the integrated means so many modules features has been integrated into one software no need to use that circulation for circulation different software sir for uh, acquisition different software so all these are the new genlib koha abcd all these are actually integrated library management software out of which koha is actually most popular in the world itself it's the first open source integrated library management software so why actually uh, advantages of koha software why uh, we are promoting that koha basically although open source software a lot of open source software there ability of level softwares are there but uh, its ability to modify to fit local needs because it's a open source software you can able to modify it no restriction on use means there is no restriction sometimes even uh, people who are not much aware about it they are asking towards the limitation of data and all those things so there is no data entry related limitations user restrictions and all those things unlimited uh, user can access simultaneously which is not in a but actually commercial software uh, people do not provide for example they are restricting on the basis of uh, charging on the basis of number of simultaneous users opac 
number of uh, records enter in a uh, module in a system so in such a, in a koha these kind of restrictions are not there unlimited uh, performance or activities you can uh, do with the help of open source software cost as such there is no charge for the cost there is no license fees so if you know you can uh, just install it and use it free exchange of technology definitely the, the most beauty and philosophy of this open source software or the open source software itself is based on the exchange of technology so whatever people know if suppose today i am here kohai i am using here and uh, you wanted to use it some of the features you wanted to incorporate which i have already done then we can actually exchange our uh, that uh, technology or codings and all those things so this is a and you might have seen also and uh, faced also uh, those who are using the koa discuss with your colleagues like um, uh, basically people used to modify that opac so how is the coding what are the codings so easily you can share among the uh, peers but uh, in uh, actually proprietary software these things are not possible so this is an another advantage that is stable technology. Koha is uh, really uh, tested and has demonstrated both stability and stability. Means it's a very stable one. But hardly you will face any kind of difficulty in comparison to another software. Uh, that performance issues or bugs, frequent bugs. So its stability is very, very good. And sharing technology I already discussed. You can share among your, uh, your thoughts, your ideas your uh, features like reports all those things among your peers support it's an open source software so there are actually n number of supports open source forums are there as well as you might be aware that lot of n number of uh, koha support vendors are also available in the market it's not like only one if commercial softwares are there like uh, soul is there vtl is there their lipsis is there only one people can support you but in open source software, uh, you are not dependent on a particular vendor. So you can get the free support of the community also through social media also or uh, through that Koha list forum also and commercial vendors also. Cost, as already discussed, that since it is open source software, it does not involve any cost. Upgradation, Koha is frequently upgraded. So upgraded means uh, major upgrades, its release comes two times in a year, one in May and one is in December. So those who are using, you might be aware that Koha is using right now version. Koha versioning system is at par with the Ubuntu. Like recent version is, stable version is 23.11. It means it came in 23 year, that is 23 and that 11th month. So that's why the reason we are calling is 23.11 major release and next uh, stable release will be 24.05 because it will be released in the this current year and in May. So this version, so these two are the major version. Thereafter, um, frequent updates like monthly updates are there that is basically uh, related to any bug fixes. So they are updating always and updation is not a problem. Sometimes those people who are using that Koha or open source, they are telling updation is a problem. That's a, not a problem. That's if you wanted to keep yourself updated with the system, modern environment, you should upgrade. Because updation, it is not also necessary that you update, but updation will give you, you will be getting a lot of actually uh, new features which you can implement in the libraries and security related always issues are there. So even if you are using the commercial software, you know they are, and for that updates, they are charging a huge amount. But for that Koha open source software, you need not to pay anything. So whenever a new release comes, there is some uh, new features. So you should always at least uh, try, um, once in two years, you should actually update it. Koha feature, directly I will demonstrate actually, rather than discussing, always Mars are there, whatever uh, actually latest uh, software, integrated library softwares uh, available in the market, whatever recent features are there, everything is available in a Koha. That's I, as I told ki Koha is uh, actually open source philosophy or uh, is basically uh, actually open, uh, depend upon the public. It's the participation between that librarian as, as well as programmer. And the participants are from the entire world. So you may be, 
you can understand that it's not uh, about uh, only one person, few or few librarian, few programmers ideas, which is incorporated in the uh, Koha library system. It's a idea of entire world library professionals and the programmers. So whenever any new features actually is required, any suppose any library need any new feature. And if programmer understand that, yes, it is required that this feature can be actually incorporated in the Koha system. They used to incorporate it. An entire world is getting benefit out of it. A lot of future, you might be aware about that Koha, like uh, social media integration and some like comment, tagging, all those are social media wave 2.0 based features, which has been already integrated. Recently, they have made actually Koha ERM module they have incorporated. And this recent version 20 I have tested is a really very amazing and beautiful uh, feature that of generating usage statistics. So, you know, for generating usage statistic, you have to actually log into your um, uh, that electronic resource provider or you have to depend on that uh, um, uh, Inflibnet. But in, if you are using Koha, all those uh, um, electronic resources <laughs> statistics you can generate is within the Koha system. And uh, as per your requirement, you can customize that reporting module. It's a network uh, server and client uh, workstation kind of thing. Means you need, a, you, uh, it's a server will be installed there and through a, and the client is a web browser based. So if you have a browser, you can access the Koha from the server. So the, basically it's a Linux, uh, Linux based system. And uh, Apache, Perl, MySQL, or MariaDB is its backend for database. Uh, it's required. And you can install it. Basically, uh, Koha community recommends Debian or uh, that Ubuntu. But uh, apart from that, you can install it in another um, that Linux platform like OpenBSD, FreeBSD, Mac also, or um, that uh, CentOS also. But uh, Koha community, and I will also suggest to use always Ubuntu or that Debian. Skill needed. Lot of actually, if you are a little bit familiar about Koha, you can definitely use it because you have to a lot of documentation. See, open source softwares actually basic. Whenever you are going to implement the open source software, then you should uh, first of all you should think about it's actually uh, base user user based and then documentation. So Koha documentation is very very strong. Even a layman, if they wanted to independent study, they can acquire a lot of knowledge about it because of very good user manuals. And then uh, wiki pages are there where everything has been explained in a very nice way. So it's a documentation part is very, very strong and uh, uh, very uh, uh, user friendly it is. So uh, if you even you will start with the scratch, you can learn so many things about Koha independently. So these are the basic modules, circulation, uh, cataloging, serial, pattern, then advanced search, acquisition, reports, item search, list, tools, OHA administration, e-resource management, authorities. So these are basic module and first uh, page of that uh, staff interface. Uh, full functions, online public access catalog it provides. And uh, <coughs> then these are the OPEC features. Basically, so um, uh, like basket, as I uh, discussed that uh, uh, in OPEC also renew online renewal, online uh, that holds, and then you can create your list, you can export your search results. So many features are there. You can email the search results to any of the user through OPEC, all, all those advanced features you can uh, actually do. And uh, some social media features are also there in the OPEC. So administration, like um, um, you might have seen that uh, delegation of authority. So a librarian can delegate uh, the authority among the, distribute the authority among that uh, library staff that who will circulate the book, who will acquis uh, perform acquisition tasks, who will perform the that uh, uh, data entry tasks, then uh, periodical tasks. So delegation of authority is there. And then borrowing a book like uh, circulation, discuss reservation, return of the book, borrow, find uh, management, all those things are there in circulation. Then in cataloging, import, export, what is your basic things are there. Apart from that, advanced features are also there. So that uh, register subscription, then in periodical, you can perform all the tasks, whatever you are uh, actually doing manually, like um, issue um, that. Uh, management of that loose issues, then uh, uh, 
uh, acquisition of that um, bound volumes and then um, uh, re uh, reminder managements if any issues are late so all the features are there here automatic email generations are there for the remind sending reminders of uh, non uh, receipt of the issues so that simple acquisition full acquisition both are there if you wanted to perform simple acquisition you can do it full acquisition you can uh, entire acquisition process you can do with the koha like your budget management, like bifurcation of budgets in department why so many central libraries of universities are basically performing this kind of task they are having multi location libraries multi branch libraries so all those features are there so uh, and this is actually that uh, interface of that new uh, erm resource management i will tell you so now uh, actually i will demonstrate you with about that uh, koha i will try to open if you wanted to open koha then you can do one thing So, are you able to see view this one? Yes, sir. This, yes, sir. Oh, this yes, one sir. too. Uh, this actually see installation part. Uh, in a brief, I will tell you. In uh, for the testing for pur purpose, you can install actually uh, Ubuntu in your system also through that VM actually Oracle VM VM. So that is a small tool. And then uh, you can uh, install it in the window also. And then uh, within that, you can install that Ubuntu software operating system. And then uh, in that Ubuntu operating system, you can actually install the Koha. major drawback is it will take much time your computer should have much ram and all those things now you see i i basically i am in windows but i have installed here uh, linux also and within that window with the help of uh, oracle vm machine
this is actually default OPEC page. Means uh, if you will install fresh Koha, your OPEC will look like this. You see, but this is a totally blank page. And later on, you might have seen that uh, people who are using Koha is having different, different uh, kind of uh, actually look and feel of their OPEC. Because uh, Koha is having a lot of flexibility to actually modify your OPEC. So that actually in, in a small library, generally, uh, if you are using uh, actually Koha, then you can make Koha as your uh, website also. This is one uh, um, beautiful advantage of using that Koha operating uh, Koha ILMS. So uh, entire this page can be actually OPEC page can be modified. You might have seen that cover images and so many pictures and all those things. Some information, links and all those things over this Koha OPEC. So that is one advantage. You can convert to your OPEC like a web page. This is actually staff interface. So there are two actually interfaces. One is staff interface, this one, and this one is actually OPEC, online public access for the open, it is open to public, your users, they can log in it, they can search it, they can log into in their pages also to log into your account. Options are there. You can see here, they can uh, give their ID and password and they can log in and they can check what are the books they have taken from the library. They can reserve. Now, this is actually the page. <clears throat> So this is uh, uh, first page of this uh, Koha staff interface. And uh, actually you have to start from scratch. Suppose you are a first time using the Koha, then first thing is to, you have to set up your library. In a, and that is through the Koha administration. Two basic thing from the Koha, for the Koha administration is, administrators, those librarian or technical person, is that Koha administration option. Or if any problem you are facing, in the Koha problem means suppose any of your option is not working. So you should not be feel that upset that uh, how to resolve it and um, how to come out of this kind of problem. So basically you have to consult these two things, Koha administration, you have to check. Suppose if something is related to circulation, you are feeling that some problem is happening in the circulation. Then what you have to do, you have to check your circulation and find rules. These are the common problems. People sometimes say that, sir, I have configured three books, but it is taking only two books. Sometimes fine, fine related issues are there. It is not calculating fine. Sometimes some uh, date related issue return period is there. So basically the problem is in the configuration. Actually, all the system is having some bugs, but Koha is having very less. Sometimes bugs come. That's why I told you monthly updates are also coming to the, always release by the Koha community. So if any kind of uh, bugs are there, that can be resolved immediately. And you will, uh, actually, you know that uh, in a time of COVID, so how actually this Koha, it's a, not a very small software or you will be in trouble if you are facing any kind of problem. Sometimes people are telling who will help if some problem happens. So it's not like that. Actually, Koha is a very, very powerful software having rich, uh, actually, community support and vendor supports also. So uh, if you are really facing any problem, you will be getting prompt solutions. I, be, I believe it is prompt solution in comparison to proprietary software also. So in a COVID situation, what has happened? You know that if suppose a library is suddenly closed, but uh, members have actually um, issued the books. Now the problem for the library is what the generation of fine, how to renew or return the book because library has been immediately shut down. And now the if the book will be not returned, found will be, fine will be generated. And if fine will be generated, actually then there will be a lot of audit objection and all those things. Or you have to manually write off all those fines of COVID period. So immediately what Koha community developers have done, they have made one option that whatever book overdue is there in between this date to that date, you can just actually change the due date in a bulk. So these kind of options are there. Uh, community take care of the actually library peoples. So it's not that uh, if any kind of serial things, uh, serious things happen and they will leave you in dark. So this is circulation module. 
all that uh, circulation and fine uh, rule related things need to be set up here. So if any kind of problem you are facing, you have to consult that related modules. So whenever you are just uh, beginning your uh, starting the Koha software, you have to start from the system administration. First thing is to that basic parameters. You have to define your library here. So from the libraries options are there. And one more thing for the learners also and those who are using Koha also. Uh, those who are using Koha, they might be aware that thousands of options are there in the Koha. So that is basically Koha is meant for actually public libraries, academic libraries, special libraries, every kind of library. So those options which are not uh, actually some of the options may be only applicable to that uh, public library. Some may be applicable to actually foreign libraries only, which is not applicable in India. So many things are there. You might have seen in the Koha like cost matrix charge, this charge, that charge. So somewhere some people are using in the library. So Koha community people or developer have incorporated that feature. So those who need to use that software, they, uh, that options, they can actually get it. Those who do not want, then they can skip it. And you have to only find out in the Koha, what are the things, what are the options related to you, relevant to you, that option you can only use. But, uh, and also for the learners, it is my suggestion that you just learn by imagining a situation of the library that what type of library is there in Indian context or academic library accordingly you try to find out the option rather than just uh, checking each and every option otherwise you will be facing a lot of difficulty because thousands of options are there so that is for learners point of view you just imagine there will be a library there will be a type of book like um, a, uh, general book textbook um, reference book, then there will be a type of user, faculties, non-faculty, undergraduate, postgraduate, these students type up there for how many days, like faculty, they will be getting 10 books for 30 days or one semester. For undergraduate, they will be getting only two books for 15 days. So this kind of situation you have to think and then accordingly you should start learning the COA. And for learning actually, uh, online demo versions are also there. So, lot of demo, you need, need, need not to, to learn about the Koha, you need not to also install the Koha. Online demo versions are there. Basically, that uh, Koha OPAC is uh, that um, uh, main uh, URL is koha-community.org. So, here you will uh, find all the options like documentation, new release, information, every information and official information. Otherwise, videos, audios, and so many uh, PPTs, manuals, you will find over that social media, YouTube, and um, Google also. But this is the official uh, website of uh, Koha. So this demo, you can see here that a lot of people like commercial people have provided that demo version. You can open anyone, any one of this, and then you can practice that ID and password of that both the, uh, have given that is staff interface. This is that uh, demo version. Demo demo is password, ID and password. So you can open it and you can practice it. 
So need not to also install the Koha on uh, your server. And basic requirement, you have to be familiar with the Koha. First requirement, rather than installation and all those things. Because installation is a one-time job. It's a, not a repeated job. But basic thing is how to get work from the Koha. That is important. So for beginners, these things are very um, actually important. Even in a mobile, you can open whenever required at the night. If young people are going to sleep, rather than using social media, I will suggest you to open this one. And that learn it to utilize your time in a fruitful way. So these are the uh, demo version. Sir, there I can show you here that one. It's a buy water uh, solution, American company. It's a very popular and uh, most dynamic, actually, that commercial form. That buy water. Buy water. You see the same things are there. So you can uh, use it here. Uh -huh. So this is the first, as I told you, okay, that uh, whenever you are starting the Koha, first, very first requirement, you have to configure all the modules or the system as per your requirements. So very first requirement is setup of the library. Library setup means you have to create at least one library. And for that university system, there are a lot of branch libraries. So they can create multiple branch libraries like departmental library and all the many of the universities are using that feature as I know. So as I have implemented in Assam University Silchar and recently that um, Guru Ghasi Das Central University. So they are actually using all the almost that branch more uh, concept of branch libraries also. So this library, as I told, you have to first of all create the library. This is option. After creation, you can uh, modify if any changes is required. Or you can edit it. And one thing is ki if anything you have done in a Koha, that can be later on modified also. So it's not a, a, except only few things uh, you cannot do. You should not do actually like uh, defining that library and then basically that's code. So I will just show you ki if, uh, there are, if you are defining the library, then you have to give one assign one code. That code you cannot modify. You can never modify. But what are the texts are there like your central library, CL, you can code, you can define. But if you are giving that central library, that central library nomenclature you can change later on. Like suppose you, your library's nomenclature is somebody has given one name like Mahatma Gandhi Central University. Like central university, you see that edits is possible. I have created one central library and now I can able to edit it. <clears throat> so you see this central library but is CL code you see I am not able to make able to add it but this uh, name I can change central library is there I can write that uh, Vishwa Bharti I can write Vishwa Bharti something um, Bharti central library I can make it later on but this code not because this code is basically, it's like our account number. In a bank account, people don't know our name. Neither the computer knows our name. Because with the name of like Vinod Kumar Misha, so many thousands of people may be there. But uh, my account number will be unique. So that computer identify the thing with the codes. So rest of the thing you can define like address and all those things. And one most important thing is ki, that using entry of the data. Data entry of data means not cataloging data only. These kind of data also. So you have to be, you have to before entry of data, you have to define your requirement output. Means I always suggest it cataloger also and all the librarians key, you first imagine what kind of reports because nowadays because of like uh, 
you know that um, NBA, VG8, NIR of ranking, you might have seen a lot of reporting requirements is coming. So, and reporting basically depends upon actually your um, data entry quality. For example, suppose somebody asks you that how many unique titles of book you have in the library. If you have not entered properly, for example, you have the four or five copy of the same book, then uh, actually uh, you should only make one record of it. But rather sometimes I have seen that libraries are eating if four books are there, then four different different records they are creating. It's four times they are entering the same book in a system. In that way, you will be not getting the accurate reports. And that will and there will be a lot of issue also. Recently, I have seen even my UGC recommended book. Someone has purchased the four books but entered four times in a record. And uh, surprisingly, that software was also implemented by me only there. So book was mine and the software was also implemented by me also, but data quality was not entered appropriately. So this thing like uh, one new library and for branch library, if you wanted to create also branch library, another library also you can create. Generally people is having only one library. So it's a one, but if you wanted to create branch library, basically it's a case of university library and public libraries. So with this option, you see now codes are there. So code, you have to always uh, think in a proper way, logical way. If you are, my suppose library name is Biju Patnaik Central Library, then uh, I should use the code like BPCL. So this, because it's a one time, only you have, uh, uh, you have to enter once and later on you cannot modify it. So these are the options uh, for that uh, multiple library you can create here. One important thing here is if you are defining code, like code like things anywhere coming in the system, QA system, you have to be very, very careful that code should be alphanumeric and there should not be a space. For example, VKM, but a space I should not give. This one, we should divide. And also that you should not give that special characters like this one. So this should be also divided. So alphanumeric is uh, uh, actually applicable only and up to the 10 uh, character. So this is one most important thing. Sometimes newbies are actually doing mistake, like they giving space, defining more than that. So system will give you error. So whenever it asks for Koha, ask for that code, then you have to be, uh, it should be in your mind that it should be alphanumeric and uh, within the 10 characters. So this is the way, first thing, you have to create that uh, library, your library name. Then second, I will just uh, jump to the important ones, item information. Just 10 or 15 minutes at last, we will, we can discuss. This item type is uh, generally type of books available inside the library, like reference book, general book, then CD, DVD, maps, etc. You can create here. So this, these are already I have created. I will show you another one. Uh, this way, uh, again, now item type code you have to define. Then see a lot of features are there inside the Koha. So whatever you are thinking, my suggestion, one thing is, hey, whatever ideas you have in your mind, first try to discover inside the Koha. The ideas which you are thinking already has been incorporated in the Koha. Or something which you wanted to do, you just try to discover the Koha. The way we are discovering through the Google or our discovery tools like uh, key, whether this video, that video, these kind of contents is available or not over the internet. Similarly, if you wanted to actually uh, utilize it, uh, Koha effectively for any other purpose, any kind of option related to library, you will be surprised to know many people are using Koha for tools management, not other than book management. So I have seen that like in tools, probably in lab also suppose, some people are using, making record of that, um, like uh, in a lab, you know, that uh, flask are there in chemistry lab, then test tubes are there, and so many equipments are there. They used to issue the users. 
so actually such i have seen that some of the people are using koha in for that purpose also so the, so many options are there so like item type uh, cd or dvd or suppose maps are there i will use this one map maps then so many other for uh, options are there you just discover that images you can cho choose so in opac it will be visible like these are the map these are the images whenever user will search anything against that particular item actually that will display the images also so people it will look like beauty beautiful or people can understand with the image also that what kind of material it is so these are the additional options so item unlimited item recently i heard that one of the commercial vendor is imposing the rule that more than 10 items also you cannot create or five item you cannot for that also they are charging i don't understand this kind of restrictions even people are paying five six lakh six lakh like that okay so these are the item type n number of item type you can create so this is option you can create here for item type so library we have created item type we have created This is authorized value means he through this mo actually module you can uh, do lot of customization as per your library requirement. But I have observed that whatever right now means because Co has developed drastically within I think six or seven years. I started in 2011 or 12 I think and after that lot of changes has happened. So whatever option actually basically in Indian context, we are using, I have seen almost every option is available right now. We hardly need any kind of actually modification or customization. Uh, means I, uh, unless otherwise there is no much local requirement or sometimes I used to say illogical requirements because sometimes you try to actually standardize. If you are auto trying going for the automation, actually first philosophy of the automation itself is re reduce your steps. In the manual work, you might be aware that a lot of uh, actually when file is moving from one desk to another desk, a lot of people are actually uh, looking after those files, this approval, that approval, this option, that option, that audit. So actually automation philosophy is key. first we have to minimize the steps, then it will be easier for the automation, not only in library, but I have learned in nowadays government is also compelling to automate or use the technology in your uh, organization. So we are actually getting training that you should actually minimize the work first, uh, that is steps of work, and then uh, it's a, it will be a very easy. So authorized value will give you a lot of flexibility like location of library. For example, suppose now some wanted to, someone wanted to keep particular kind of book inside a Elmira or inside a particular Elmira or something. But that option may not be available in the Koha. But they have also given this kind of option where you can actually make your um, location as per your choice. So these are the options also available inside the Koha. You can um, define it here and use it at the time of cataloging, circulation, or data entry of book or acquisition module. So these are the, some of the things. Suppose you are thinking that it is not available in acquisition module. You just check with the authorized value, whether you can uh, create that new one, you see new category and all those things are given. That is possible. And if in a cataloging, you are thinking some option is not there, you just create it here and then use it that in a cataloging module. In similarly, in a circulation periodical, in a OPAC, if you are thinking some options is there or not, then you can come here and check and that you can just learn key, uh, how to get that kind of work from these options means a cut, uh, that customization is scope or opportunity already provided in the Koha.
so now another is the pattern category so pattern category another most important thing that is category of uh, user like faculty uh, faculty in like uh, um, then uh, within faculty you can uh, categorize professor associate professor assistant professor then you can not teaching you can can means n number of thing n number of categorization you can do and basically categorization these two thing pattern category and item category actually depend upon your reporting requirements and depend upon your uh, that uh, uh, report, reporting as well as your uh, uh, circulation requirements for example suppose uh, today all the teachers are there like assistant associate or professor they all are entitled to get 10 books for six months okay so only one category you can create like professor so or teaching staff so all because your um, uh, category require your requirement is ki all, that all the professors are getting 10 books so you should not create associate professor like professor professor only one category like professor if i will create for suppose like 90 days or whatever is there this is email required to be sent koha is having email facilities even uh, that uh, um, uh, sms facilities are there but for sms you have to pr uh, purchase the uh, emails uh, that uh, SMS service provider services and lot of uh, administrative issues are there related to getting approval of the try and all those things. But for email, you can simply create your Gmail account, all those things, and you can use it. So, so suppose here, if I have created only one professor, and now I will configure that 10 books to each, to everyone, irrespective of assistant professor, associate professor. So this, that is possible because this is only, these are common, professor category is common. But for, but, but for example, suppose tomorrow you wanted to generate a report. How many associate professors have issued the book? How many books are actually due against the associate professor? Or how many books are due against assistant professor only? So actually that kind of report, it will be very difficult for you to get. Unless otherwise do, no any kind of uh, specific data. See in a Koha one beautiful uh, full thing, which I actually love a lot is the creation of report. But that is only possible if you know that their SQL or um, database structure. Already I have made lot of Already I have made a lot of report as per Indian context, Indian academic library requirement and made it available over that um, wiki page of the report. So I was, I am just telling you that if you think that ass assistant professor's reporting is required, associate is reporting is required, professor is separate, report is required, then you can do this, that you can create separate category for this. Categorization, if you will create more category, definitely that will be a complex. Don't make the system very complex. But at least categorization of book and all those things is depend upon your circulation and reporting requirement. So accordingly, you can take your decision and create the things. Sometimes it happens that a student, suppose today all the students like irrespective of their undergraduate, postgraduate or PhD, all are getting 10 book or four books only. So you can create only student. But tomorrow, if uh, there will be a rule that undergraduate will get only four, two book, postgraduate will get only four book, then in that case, you have to create the category. Definitely, you can create at any time. That is not an issue. But the thing is, again, you if you have already, you have only one common, for example, today I have created only professor. Within this professor, assistant, associate, and professor, all the three peoples are there. Now, today, Later on, I can create assistant professor, but manually what we have to identify that other assist, what are the, who are the assistant professor? And then we accordingly, we have to change their category. No need to enter the new record. But the thing is you have to do some manual work at later stage. So this is, this kind of thing is actually planning. 
uh, which uh, library librarian people should think before uh, actually uh, using the software recently i actually i have completed phd and lot of actually i am thankful to that uh, saha sir also got uh, given a lot of good feedback timely so what i observe basically is that uh, admin related planning related issues are lacking basically that this is one of the reason why libraries are right now facing the problem of actually data migration if they wanted to change so their data has been locked surprisingly uh, uh, in my feedback people told that they didn't ask in the agreement to provide that uh, data in a mar format or excel format but so many clauses is required you know aajkal court ka zamana hai to we have to be very very careful so at the time of making we have lot of policy like people are focusing acquisition policy like electronic resource management policy we should have some um, automation related policy also so we have to define it because these are a big task and one time task so repeatedly every time you cannot change the software like uh, you, um, purchasing the resource and then uh, managing it's very easy but software all the times you cannot change it today you are using koha tomorrow you change it into the lipsis or sol and then if you don't like then change again to some other software so this should not happen your planning should be very very strong so in agreement because of the agreement related clauses people are facing problem even good and big libraries are facing problem they are uh, their data has been completely locked even uh, they are not able to get the data in a excel sheet they used to provide the people in a pdf format that pdf format is also uh, actually kind of format which easily you cannot convert it in your um, excel sheet or in mark format so that people can change the software so that planning part is very very necessary before using that any of the software so this circular pattern suppose i have created then in a circulation module uh, you can define your uh, circulation rules so you, you see if i wanted to see professor suppose i have configured professor item type suppose book i wanted to issue that low uh, 10 books then for suppose 60 days lot of other features are also there which in indian context we cannot even imagine that why people are using sometime we can say that what kind of stupid option they have made but somewhere some people are actually using the software that's why it has been incorporated in the koha system one good thing is ki we in, in india users are uh, several but developer are very less only one two but at least we can participate in actually suggestion so lot of suggestion uh, i have given in koha bug websites is there bug jila so you can whatever feature you feel not available you can suggest and see developers are always checking ki what are the new recommendation suggestions are there and if they will find that it's a really very very common and relevant for most of the library worldwide then definitely they will incorporate it in coming versions so these features sometime which you are seeing actually it may not be applicable to your library but other libraries are using and sometime how actually features actually is also is sponsored by the library for example now one thing people are asking why what developers are getting what open source community people are getting so developers are actually indirectly sometime getting money for example today you want any special feature in the koha and that koha feature is very very much required by so many libraries so the developers may not take pain to actually implement it but that they also feel that it is necessary but somebody should is sponsor it so actually suppose if your library wants so you can just pay you can discuss with them and they will sponsor it you will sponsor it and you and that they will in a next coming version they will incorporate it by doing so even these kind of philosophy actually in indian context people are not aware and they are for the customization i know some good libraries big libraries are paying amount to the commercial vendors for customization they are customizing and that their customization is only confined to that uh, particular library but if you are aware about all those uh, philosophy then if you need some feature you just go to the koha bug jila website you just write down that this is the feature which i required and i am looking for sponsors we're looking for developer 
so what developer people will see and if they will find it's a very relevant they will come to you and then you can discuss and if they feel they can uh, do it and by doing so they will uh, incorporate it you know if suppose something is not required by uh, many of the libraries or um, libraries worldwide then for individual your library also they can customize but if they feel that yes this is very interesting many people will be benefited then only one is sponsor you will pay the amount but but you see that ne from next version entire world will be using that soft uh, that option so this is one philosophy uh, that but in commercial this is different in a commercial people if same feature you are also using in commercial software i am also using the same software if i wanted to incorporate the same feature for which you have already paid then again if i want the same feature then i have to also pay so this is another beauty of that open source software if one person one time has been already paid another person need not to pay so fine amount uh, you can define fine also fine charging interval one i can define fine grace period is there lot of option is there interval you see overdue fine cap is there fine suggestion grace period fine cap uh, cap fine at replacement price overdue fine cap so and manuals are also thousand page manual as there with the screenshot good screenshot so it's very easy for those who are consulting the manual suspensions are there maximum suspense means you can suspend the people also if its book is over down overdue and uh, then renewal allowed how many renewals are allowed automatic renewal you can activate here no renewal before lot of um, 20 30 options are there hold allowed how many uh, books can be kept hold on hold at a time by user so these features are there whatever you need you could just um, actually uh, enter the data accordingly and then save it so this is circulation um, and find related it's a very important and confusing initially it's a confusing people are uh, confused ki that uh, which data need to be actually entered in uh, which place so you see that uh, professors is created so this is one option so this is this is uh, this was the very very ba basic requirement and so many other things are there budget funds these things uh, you can uh, actually create here now i will suppose initially this basic uh, configuration has been done now acquisition we start the library process with the acquisition first uh, procurements even online suggestions are there time is very short to show you all those things but in acquisition i will dis uh, just uh, discuss in briefly online suggestions are also there so very first requirement is actually you must define a budget you see in a administration so budget for actually uh, some now some people like a small library are telling we don't have budget so why it is mandatory so budget so budget is very first requirement it's not it cannot be happen that the library is not having budget definitely in india also actually budget is there but we don't know actually initially so um, you can uh, since it is a basic requirement because uh, we have lack of planning so initially our administration did not able to actually let us know that how much budget library is having this year and that uh, if even they uh, let us know that this 5 crore 2 crore 1 lakh 2 lakh then later on they used to change so any alteration is possible but for using the koha you can uh, by default uh, initially define anything even you don't know or the picture is not at clear so new budget is later on you can modify if any modifications happen you can just modify it so now i start it so initially we can say that it's uh, uh, april 
first and the end of this budget will be that March. This is our Indian uh, financial year, like uh, library budget. Total amount, suppose we have 10 lakh. This is active one. Active means from this budget, we have to spend the amount. So the very first requirement in acquisition uh, module is that defi uh, defining that budget. Now budget has been defined, but it's the overall budget of the library. Now the thing is key, in a library, there may be a budget for the periodicals, electronic resources, for that uh, hard copy of book, for that um, electronic books, or maybe another thing. So that also you have to, this is overall budget. Now you have to define that funds. That add fund means out of this budget, how much is for book, how much is for periodical, how much is for other things. If this kind of policy is there inside your library, but it is not necessary. But uh, at least one fund you have to define here. But because this is an overall budget. So suppose book, I have only book fund and then uh, all the 10 lakh rupees, uh, I have to spend it that uh, book fund only. So all the 10, 10 lakh I will mention here that it's for book. rather than uh, segregating it into the different one. If you wanted to segregate, then remember that 10 lakh is the overall budget. Accordingly, suppose you wanted to divide into 5 lakh. 5 lakh is for um, that uh, book and then periodical again fund you have to buy for it. For example, let's see, I want to, to make it 5 lakh only. 5 lakh for book. This library is suppose this Bharti Central Library and other features are there, warning. You can set that warning after that one uh, eighty uh, after eighty percent is consumed, it will system will give you warning that eighty percent has been consumed. So this, this is book fund. I have defined five lakh out of ten lakh. Now you see one fund has been defined. And division can be done in three or uh, more than uh, one is, is, is step also. For example, book fund I have divided, but further if someone wanted to divide this also to sub fund, means book, okay, but for print book out of 5 lakh, I will spend for print book 1 lakh and for ebook 4 lakh. That also you can define here. Means divide, subdivide this one into another Matlab, type of fund, print book, book. So this kind of sub fund, addition of sub fund is also possible in Koha. And this 5 lakh only, that is the major fund for book. And if I wanted to further divide it into our 10 lakh in uh, periodical support, then we can make it uh, just in a similar way. We can define that periodical fund also. So this was 10 lakh major fund. Again, I can define it here, add fund. So 5 lakh is remaining. You see what the warning I am getting. Form not submitted because of the following problem. Fund amount exceed period allocation. 
it mean you see 5 lakh already i have allocated but i have inter intentionally here 6 lakh so system won't take it should be only 5 lakh because 5 and 6 it will become 11 lakh and we have main our major uh, library budget is only 10 lakh so these kind of uh, checks and controls are always available inside the koha manually you did not to actually check always actually librarians know all these things okay, at the time of budget or some regular at some regular interval of time they are always asking their acquisition people periodical people tell me the data how much has been spent how much is left like this one so if you are using koha it's my personal experience that in our library after implementation of koha we are fully using this module and I personally feel that 50% uh, of the workload has been actually reduced after using this acquisition module. So all the reporting, basically people are preparing that Excel sheets and all the things like um, for data for that number of books and then who has recommended this kind, that kind of thing. So all those things we are getting, uh, doing through the Koha module and as and when any kind of reporting is required, we are generating. Means our reporting efforts time all has been reduced uh, very um, effectively. And uh, means in a fraction of a minute or second, we are actually generating our report. For example, we have a lot of departments. If someone is asking okay, how much your, this department and spend the amount, how many books has been uh, recommended through this department? Who has recommended? How uh, uh, how many vendors have supplied these uh, these must have book? Uh, how many amount has been uh, actually uh, amounts order has been given to particular vendor? So that kind of statistics and report that is possible through Koha you can do it. So these funds I have actually created already. This was the very first requirement. Now, another re important requirement is vendor. So without creating of the vendor, and this is, these are actually one-time tasks. Repeatedly, you have, you should not do it. Uh, once it is actually stored in the system, it will be, re it will remain for forever. Unless otherwise you are not intentionally deleting. And delete is also, deleting is also not recommended. So this, uh, suppose book, as I told you, if today is 5 lakh, if you wanted to edit, you can edit this record at any time. Now vendor, another requirement is vendor. So I am creating one vendor, suppose. This is, uh, suppose, uh, Oxford is vendor. Oxford is one vendor name. It is not available inside the system. because uh, I have not entered any record against this vendor. Vendor search returned no result. Now enter the new one. So suppose that Oxford and then all the address details like uh, Kolkata, <laughs> all the basic requirements. So you can uh, um, get as and when required, you can get all the details of the vendor here. So that vendor is active, price basically in rupees, tax rate, not applicable, dis discount, 
this is suppose 20 percent you are getting this may be uh, this can be changed also Now one vendor has been created. Now basic uh, requirement uh, of acquisition module has been uh, done. We have budget also. We have entered one vendor also. Now next what we have, we have to do. We have to actually now enter some record. Now suppose there are two things directly through that uh, Online purchase suggestions is also available in, inside the Koha. That also you can do. Hardly, I think, uh, uh, many of the libraries are not uh, have not ad adopted that one because of our manual process, manual indent form, audit purpose kind of thing. Uh, so still we are uh, using that uh, one, uh, that uh, manual system and then uh, manually doing acquisition related things. So, but here I will suggest, ki, suppose even if you are Actually, uh, doing manually, you get that manual uh, indent form. Then what you have to do it that you just search that pattern. Suppose I am a pattern here, librarian, and I have repeat, actually that given you one order in hand. We have, this is my suggestion, directly you can feed the data also in acquisition module. But my suggestion is ki at least you try to go through this module. If in your library, you got that purchase requisition form and that is recommended by suppose one of the your uh, user. Suppose, let me check uh, my... Okay, let me enter one uh, pattern inside this Koha. So in this way, you can also understand how to enter pattern. Pattern means user, it's a very simple. This surname. You can use that Mishra and then first name that uh, suppose Amit and then date of birth. These things are there actually you may or you may not use all those things that address. One thing in address in place of address suppose your department you wanted to add, enter. Then you can enter here department. It means not that key, department is not there. Department is also a type of actually uh, location address. So you just assume that its address is department of suppose Hindi or whatever is department of Hindi. So this is a kind of actually uh, that its uh, address is not that its nomenclature is not a friend uh, friendliness. So uh, but later on, uh, once you will uh, understand all those things, this customization is also possible. So that is also possible, but uh, you can manage with this kind of thing also, address also. But address can be changed at department also. So primary phone number, basic details, you can give here primary email, suppose. So I think few of the details, which is very much necessary, you should enter those. 
like mobile number also i feel that this is necessary then its card number suppose 2131074 professor and then its expiry date So the pattern detail has been entered. Now I'm coming to acquisition module. So the basic thing uh, already uh, I have configured that budget and now I wanted to So yes, as I told you now, now, now okay, that uh, how you you should if you are not using that online book recommendation um, uh, procedure, then at least what you should do is okay, suppose you have your indent form in your hand. So and now that indent suppose Amit Mishra, he is a one professor and he has recommended that book. So what you do at least you come you search that Amit Mishra. From your system, professor, and and on his behalf, a librarian can directly enter that rec recommended book list. So actually, it will be stored in the system that this this particular professor has recommended that this book. <clears throat> Actually, I have installed it in um, like, you know, Jugaad kind of thing in a Windows machine. So it's a slow, very slow. If only I will install that uh, Ubuntu and Koha, it will be very fast. So you see that Amit account is open. Now here is one option purchase suggestion against his account. Now the indent form that were printed indent form is in our hand. And whatever book details are here, I will simply enter here. New purchase suggestion. We are just actually from the scratch, I am just showing you the option from the start of the book purchase to that cataloging. Now title of the book. So suppose I will enter here five laws of 
लाइब्रेरी साइंस ऑथर रंगानाथन कॉपी राइट ईयर वॉट एवर इज मिनिमम रिक्वायरमेंट इज देर फॉर परचेजिंग अ बुक ऑल यू हैव टू इंटर हियर पब्लिशर सपोज एस एस यू कैन इंटर हियर रीजन्स आर देयर न्यू बुक द कॉपी ऑन द सेल्फ इज डैमेज अपकमिंग टाइटल बाय पॉपुलर ऑथर नाउ यू मे बी थिंकिंग दैट वॉट काइंड ऑफ ऑप्शन टू ऑप्शन इज देयर एंड सपोज it is also mandatory now you want third it's a new book and another option you wanted to make so that in the beginning i told you ki then authority that lists are there so you can these two options has been populated from there or somewhere so on that place you have to find if you wanted to create any other reason the book is lost but buying new one or the new book recommended or something like that then that kind of option you can create here create in the koha system so at the time of data entry it will display that option also it's not like that um, uh, these two are all, all, all only there and third you cannot define so fund you see book fund now here i have to select book fund this is actually entry of the book against that particular member those who have given the order now i am telling you ki what is the benefit of uh, doing your uh, acquisition automated here if i wanted to actually i have already defined book fund so as and when required actually i can generate the report that how much uh, money has been spent from book fund so suppose two copy i need price approximately this is not the fixed price suppose 1000 and then total you see automatically it counted and submit the suggestion so this is the entry on behalf of that recommender who is and those the person who has recommended the book to your faculty now librarian has entered that book against that particular member in a koha system so if someone is purchasing in bulk you do it in that way only okay, that you enter all that recommended uh, book list inside uh, uh, that uh, faculty or recommender uh, account in the koha system now one book has been so again you go so many whatever 10 20 um, uh, unlimited number of books you can enter here so whenever suppose you wanted to see how ki how many this uh, uh, faculty have recommended the book in the past you can actually come to the koha account and you can see all the details in the koha now i wanted to give this order to the oxford vendor so what you have to there may be a 10 or 20 vendor in your library but you wanted to give this order after getting approval or whatever formality you have to perform as per your rules then you search the vendor vendor oxford already entered by me in the system why it's not coming this is the oxford vendor select the oxford vendor now here the concept is basket you have to create a basket basket means it's a kind of order like order number you can say here so it's a basket name suppose i will give oxford slash order 
जीरो वन Now here, add two basket. Basket one basket has been created, and now you have to add two basket. The titles. It's like a concept of using like uh, malls. We are going. We are just keep taking one basket from that uh, mall, and when we are what we are doing. Next step is whatever items we need. We are just keeping inside that basket, and at last we are placing the order. Now here, see that. Item in a basket. Now you wanted to add the item. Item means books. So there are six or seven options are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options from a suggestion. So here I will uh, add a title from the suggestion because from a suggestion means just uh, I have entered one record against a professor Amit Mishra, and uh, that is there. So my intention is to add that. Suggested suggested title inside that basket. So that is one option. And for so example, suppose you are not actually adding that uh, record. Means you don't want it to add a record against that member. Like going in a circulation module, searching that member, and you wanted to enter the record directly. You wanted to enter the record from here itself. So that I also I will show you. So here directly you can enter that author title detail. But here I will do it from purchase suggestion. From a subscription also there that is for the journals. From uh, existing order means if suppose some order you have already given you wanted to like you know give more order to another vendor you can select from there from an external source this is a Z39 feature and then from a new file then from a stage file also it is there means some mark file in a bulk actually people are doing thousands of book you wanted to purchase and if your vendor is providing the mark record another file that you can do it also here from title with a highest hold ratio uh, from suppose some book is very highly demanded so that kind of facility you have to search what kind of options all these are it will reduce your efforts and you can actually do your work uh, bulk uh, ordering in a short um, actually short time so here actually from suggestion I will choose. There are no outstanding suggestions. Now it is showing no suggestions are there. Why the reason is I have although entered one record against that particular professor. But it is not showing here. And the reason is because once the book is entered in a account of that pattern, actually what is should be approved from the home page. So you see here it is showing suggestion pending approval. For this is why, because suppose if I wanted to actually make a purchase suggestion online, from here example, you see the option. If I will log in, then it will show me that option, purchase suggestion option. So if suppose from the OPEC, someone is making purchase suggestion, then definitely it will directly go, didn't go to Koha. It will be first uh, checked by the library professional and then it, they will approve it or disapprove it. So here, five laws it is showing me, mark selected as, now we see accepted. Various options are there with the reason. What is the reason? Best seller, I can make a reason also you can define what kind of book, suppose it is book and now just I am submitting it.
So this book is suppose accepted. Means now it's okay. So these kind of feature actually uh, related to social media kind of thing. It's not that if someone has suggested a book and then it will automatically enter inside our course. So these kind of checks are there, security checks are there. Like without approving, you cannot do anything. So that one book has been accepted here. Now let's come to that acquisition modules. Or fold this uh, uh, vendor basket already I had created. So it is displaying here. Now purchase suggestion. It should show that uh, title now because I have already approved that one. See this title, it is showing. Now order. Now again here you have a scope to modify. Acquisition people can actually modify any, if any data is not correct, they can do modifications here. It's not like that one time that place uh, uh, you are actually directly entering that is supposed to be entered by the user in online through online OPAC. But uh, you, since you have not activated that one, then you are entering through the uh, staff module, um, uh, the data of the pattern. So in that way, it is um, uh, the system is thinking it is directly coming from that OPAC. That's why uh, they are giving again system gives the option to do any kind of modification alteration if it is required you can do it here if nothing then you can just save it suppose discount right now you wanted to change then you can change it here uh, price you wanted to change you can change it here these are approximate price because sometimes it happens that uh, uh, whenever you are receiving the order the price is different so this is actually basically for your calculation purpose or bursting purpose because suppose you wanted to um, uh, know that how much order is pending, then it will help actually library to know that uh, uh, how much uh, amount is actually pending um, and uh, it is still in order. So that kind of things you can do. So it is uh, it is right now entered inside that basket. And now uh, another title if I, I wanted to enter, one five blows of book I have entered. So only one I have entered in the purchase suggestion. So there is no other, suggest other suggestions available. Now, as I told you, directly you can enter here also from a new empty record. Means there is no record available inside that Koha, either in a purchase suggestion or catalog inside, but here directly I wanted to enter. So what is the advantage and what is the decent advantage is directly you can enter, but uh, actually you, you will have no option to uh, uh, record that member detail that who has recommended this, that particular book. So suppose here, I am reading Koha Automation. I am entering just one book. 
author name Shabud Mishra, publisher SS. Addition, suppose second. Whatever detail is required to purchase the book. Quantity, suppose only one. Costing book fund, then 1000 or 2000, whatever book cost is there, vendor price is there. You can also make uncertain. Then you can save it. Now you see two books is entered inside the system. So now you must have noticed that against this, uh, there is no uh, who has recommended, uh, which faculty has recommended, which he was he belongs to where. There is no such kind of recommender information is there. But in five laws of library science, you will get like Mishra, see by Vinod Mishra, all those information is available. But here, no such information is available. So you cannot also generate the report who has recommended. But suppose I wanted to generate the report ke, uh, from the system that um, uh, Amit Mishra is a professor and how many books he has recommended in the year 1999 or the year 2010 or 2015. So all these things is possible if you have entered the data in that way. Number one thing. Another advantage is of Suppose uh, generally uh, in through that uh, Koha, you can generate a lot of uh, email messages for like you know, trans, uh, circulation. When the book will be issued, that message will be generated, return message will be generated, that uh, overdue uh, reminders, uh, that advance notification for renewals. So these kind of messages can be generated from that uh, system uh, circulation module. Similarly, from the acquisition module also, email automatic email will be generated to the recommender. Now, suppose I have appropriately entered the data record through this member. Sometimes what happens inside the library, those who are not uh, actually um, uh, following that acquisition model, automated acquisition module. Now, what will happen? Suppose uh, I am a faculty, I have given uh, a order of the book to the library. Now, I don't know. As a faculty, I don't know when my book will arrive. What is the status of my book? Manually, he or she may ask the library that uh, what has happened to my book, when it will arrive, something like that. But if you are following this kind of procedure, what will happen? Ki now I have placed the, entered the book inside the basket. One message will be, email will go to that, um, uh, that recommender that your book has been ordered. When I have initially accepted that one in a Koha, one email will go to the uh, recommender that your book has been accepted in the library. Second, this one is the order related. Then once I have entered this record inside a particular basket, message will go, your book has been ordered. And at last, when I will receive this book, a message will generate that to that user that your book has arrived inside the library. So this is the advantage if you are using acquisition module in this way, that is entering of the data against that particular recommender. Otherwise, suppose here directly I have entered the record, but where the message will generate? Because no emails are there, no um, uh, recommender's name are there, so system will not identify who has recommended the book. So message won't be generated. Now only two books I wanted to recommend and I wanted to close this basket. Here option email you can directly send to the vendor also. But in India context, this kind of thing never happened. Definitely everybody is sending a hard copy. But here, if you wanted to save time directly from here, you can send the email. Actually, definitely somewhere in the forum, some people are doing this. Automation means every work should be automated. But we are, uh, even I will say not semi-automated. Half of the work is manual, half of the work is automated.
now this total item count three biblio record two item expected three so what has happened one order has been completed through the koha system so what i will just repeat is just i have uh, defined the budget that is one time job then i have defined what vendor that is one time job it is available inside the system always then against that particular uh, uh, um, that uh, recommender i have uh, in indent form i have entered the record against that pattern and then i went to that oxford vendor and created one basket inside that basket i have just entered one that uh, whatever books uh, uh, purchase suggestion has been given so uh, that one on one uh, that directly i have entered the record now after some uh, some day what will happen practically that book will arrived inside the library so we will go to acquisition module now this part is known as receiving now the book and then um, uh, invoice etc will be in our hand so our hand we will uh, it's automatically we will understand that it is from the oxford so we will find out that oxford vendor books and uh, bill both are in your hand so you just search that oxford vendor now see this one is there you just here is a option receive shipment one basket it is showing order it is showing here is the option on top receive shipment so vendor invoice invoice number you can give of fold that shipment date shipment cost not applicable So it will show two book. Now you see these two books. So here, option receive in the right hand corner. Cancel order. You can do it here from here and delete from the record. Transfer. All those two three options are there. So here is two panels. You can see right hand side and this uh, left hand side. So right hand side, whatever books you have uh, given order, that price, anything, everything is showing. Here you can change the price by seeing if there is any changes in the final original bill. 
and then uh, here uh, you can now give the accession number basically acquisitions job is to define give that acquisition number so uh, book one two three book hundred suppose i have given that uh, this is accession number item type suppose this is book add item now one item added now in right side you can see quantity ordered to quantity received one I'm not aware if this is a bug or something else. Let me confirm this. It should not show login page here. There may be some bug. First time I am just uh, using this one, the latest one. It should show the again because suppose one uh, one uh, book I have already received here. Now the panel right hand panel is showing two book ordered, one book already received. Now again here same options, accession number and all those things. It should show here. Instead of that, it is showing login page. It means there is some issue either in my setting or in maybe in uh, this recent version. I will receive this one. Let's see.
I will assign here accession number B101. Koha so, item type book. One copy. It earlier it was showing some error because two copy was there. Instead of showing that receiving page, it was showing logging page. There was some problem, I think. Maybe in new version or new set or some setup is required. So it was only one copy. Now it is showing one copy has been received. So it is not showing more options. It's a complete. So I will just confirm it. So in that way, this one, once it is received, now acquisition process is over actually. So just my intention was to show you that how acquisition module fully, actually, I think this is the process. I think any of the libraries, library is using. So this is not a big harder task to perform acquisition through that um, Koha module. And it makes your job very easy. Now, any kind of report, if you want, you can just make a SQL report and you can generate through that uh, reporting module of that Koha. Now here, what kind of report I can generate? Okay, how many um, books we have already ordered to this vendor? How many amount has been consumed? How many order is pending? Uh, how many um, uh, that um, uh, particular uh, faculty has given order? So these kind of report is in, reporting is now possible. Manually, you need not to make the report as and when required. Just simply, it's a matter of making one report as well, but permanently store in your system. That is already available in the wiki page. And then uh, as and when required, you can generate the report. Now you can see here, one book has been already received. This, I will receive this one from this actually page. It will come to here, whatever books has been already received. So this is the receiving part is over here only finished. So now if you can see the budget here in acquisition, it will display you also the uh, that budget status. Okay, how many uh, amount has been spent already through this uh, user interface also and through reporting. This reporting also you can uh, actually generate. You see 1,600. And this one, total available is this one. This one is available in this uh, 1,600. Uh, amount ordered and you spent 1600 so this is already now you can uh, visualize your uh, availability of funds etc can be visualized here so this is about the acquisition process now after that uh, book is received inside that acquisition module what will happen it will go to the cataloger because acquisition people only use that uh, small uh, some few of the records which is where necessary to purchase the book like uh, isbn number edition title etc but it's a job of cataloging uh, cataloger that he has to perform all the cataloging related tasks like assigning call number, then book number, then pages, so many other details, place of publication. So what cataloger will do? He, uh, that um, book will go to the cataloging module people. Then the book has been already received and in available inside the Koha system. That's why we are initially I told you what is the mean what is mean by the integrated library management system. So books, title, detail, everything has been entered only once. Now you need not to enter again. So what cataloger will do that search book Koha automation. I think it was the book that is in his, his head also. He will find out search that book. And whatever details are not entered, uh, he or she will just complete the all those details of that particular record and update it. So that is the job of actually cataloger. So the book uh, is in hand of cataloger, cataloging technical section. Now you see the book is here. Click this particular title. Now it is showing this only this much of detail. So cataloger has to do just editing the record. Edit. 
edit record. V101. The data entry framework, you can customize as per your requirement because 800, 900 fields are there. So you can just make it short 15, 20 data entry worksheet and it will display in a simply one page. Like here you see so many tags are there. So cataloger need not to jump always here 600, 700, 800 fields. I have customized it and see all the important fields appearing only in one page. So whatever data is missing, now I will simply enter that one. ISBN number is missing, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's a cataloger job. Enter or classification number is suppose missing. Then 0, 2, 5, I will enter that uh, VKM, whatever book number. Item number means book number. And then other personal name, Mishra, suppose that is missing. We know I can enter. It's a cataloger job. And now uh, second edition place, I wanted to enter, you can enter this. You have to follow here actually that uh, data entry rules, like um, that uh, ACR2 rules, number of pages, 200 or whatever, if CD is there, CD. So it's not a QA uh, related task. It's a task which you have studied in your Believe and MLIP, okay, how to enter the record inside the system. Added entry, you can do it. Most of the people sometimes thinking of how to enter data. So it's a format already given ready made. Now you have to decide how to enter because you have studied in it the Bilib MLIC course. How to comma and all those things, what to enter in that 500 field. So very user friendly nomenclature, everything is given against this tag. This is the mark tag. Now you have to think what to enter in the mark tag. This is the subject related to your study, not the COHA actually. So just I have updated. This is book and this is the cataloger job. Now some fields were mandatory. It is automatically filled. Now record is see these many records has been entered. So this is now cataloger job is also over. Now since you have if you have entered followed the acquisition procedure, so you need not to see or check your accession register. Now from here itself you can see that uh, uh, who was the supplier of this book. Now this CC vendor invoice number, this order number. When, what was the price? Every detail are here. I mean, you need uh, now you don't depend upon the accession register. So that following that acquisition module in a automator environment gives you a lot of uh, actually save your lot of time and uh, promptly you can supply uh, give service to the user. For example, in case of book lost, you need not to check your accession register. That logger or library administrator can log into and just see okay, what was the cost of the book. So this is about the cataloging. Now, directly suppose some most of the library, many library not following acquisition module. So how to just start entering the data? Once the book is purchased, everything has been done. Then cataloging is very simple. It's uh, just you have to come to the cataloging module and you start entering the data. So this is the cataloging. It's a direct entry. Just forget about the acquisition and all those things. New record, book format. ISBN. You should always use ISBN number. That this is most important field. For support. 
पर्सनल नेम सपोज सर दिस इज रिलेटेड आई आई हैव लिटिल बिल कस्टम आई सपोज दिस बुक इज एक्चुअली रिटर्न बाय योर एनी ऑफ द फैकल्टी सो यू कैन हियर दिस फील्ड इज फॉर ऑथर डिपार्टमेंट नेम ऑफ एन आई टी आर आई हैव रिटर्न हियर सो यू कैन जस्ट गी असाइन हियर दिस फ्रॉम विच डिपार्टमेंट दिस फैकल्टी बिलोंग्स टू इट विल हेल्प इन रिपोर्ट जनरेशन ऑफ रिपोर्ट सो द टाइटिल I will make it uh, like classified code. Right code. Suppose now remainder of title and statement of responsibility additions. All the cataloging details you can enter here. After entry, this is a bibliographic. There are two interface. This is a bibliographic data entry field where author, title, publisher, co-authors, translator, editor, ISBN number. um these kind of keywords uh, any other uh, summary information about the book that is bibliographic information you have to enter here and the next step is ki accession uh, number that is local fields so that interface is different once you in uh, enter the bibliographic record it will show you this page so here now you have to since directly see you are uh, entering the record so full call number you have to define uh what is the call number suppose the r a n then accession number field here 1002 and copy number cost replacement by here is the scope you can define cost also directly in a cataloging module and then serial number if any volume it's addition then you can define here normal uh, normal purchase price this is discounted price actually so this uh, data entry uh, uh, that uh, local entry accessioning part you can do it here and add the item if you have more than two books three books then similarly you can enter just add item now again this page will display you can add uh, next number <coughs> and add the item so multiple copies can be also entered in one go also you can enter the multiple copy for example suppose i wanted to enter five copy so first copy i will enter here p103 and add multiple copies option is there i will simply add here how many five copy suppose now and add now you will see here five copies will be added here five uh, b102 one copy was there i have entered but now five enter i have directly received here added to that collection so now it is showing in one go i have entered all this record that's it so this is about cataloging only and any kind of modification editing deletion suppose after two year some more books this classified code uh, came inside the library and you wanted to enter so then again uh, different record you need not to create simply you just if you wanted because this is a process we used to check the duplicate checking inside the library then um, first you check for that book if it is available already inside the library you just enter add the item for example classified catalog code after one year or six months some more book came first uh, first requirement is adding of um, that's uh, searching for that uh, availability of the uh, book inside the library if it is available search with the title or author this is one most important thing because by mistake you may purchase if you will not enter the data correctly or check do the duplicate checking efficiently you may purchase that uh, duplicate books now you sub suppose classified catalog book again some book came inside the library and uh, i wanted to just enter uh, its accession number because rest of the information is already available so uh, you have to just enter that new accession register accession number so what i will do this editing and even if some editing information suppose just isbn number is wrong or something by mistake you have done you can just edit the record with this option record option or if i wanted to you wanted to add some other book then simply edit item information is there apart from that lot of option is there so you have to 
learn all those things. Hey, what is the use of all those options? But definitely, if you will try to explore, you will find nice features of this Koha and you can also implement it. Now you see that field again came. Now suppose this uh, accession number after two years I receive and its accession number is something 1000. I can just add one more book. If suppose you wanted to delete, you wanted to do withdraw that book, then uh, simply what you have to do, you just search that book. In that way, you come to up to this location and then edit this information. Suppose I wanted to delete this particular book. Uh, this is no more required or some additions of withdrawal is there. This book is lost. I will do it editing part. Edit here that B102 will display here right now. Now. <clears throat> And that particular book's information, you can add it. So the here, you can edit this information. We can make it, is its status lost, if it is lost, and you can update it, save the changes. So this is related to cataloging. Now I will show you that circulation of the book. It's a very, very simple. Now its record has been, suppose he is lost. His status is lost right now. Now I wanted to issue one book to the Professor Amit Misra. And uh, so what, uh, it's a very simple issue written at the counter. This particular home page will show what uh, circulation staff has to do. Sir, simply he will enter or scan its barcode number. If he don't know its barcode, suppose some faculty he knows he forget that ID card, then the, by name also you can search in the Koha. So two one three one zero seven four. If you will scan. Then directly it will show the member detail page. So 213104 uh, is member. Now it will show that members detail and then book number. You simply enter manually or if you are following manually or if you have barcode system, then you scan that book barcode number 103. Now check out. <clears throat> Now you see the book is issued. <clears throat> so I have configured two book or something, 10 books. So up to 10 book, it will accept. Otherwise, if you will try to issue that 11th, it will show you the warning. So now you see the book has been issued to this member. The details are here. So this is simply issue issue of the book. And if you wanted to return this book, it's a very simple. Member will come to library along with the book. ID card is not required. You just uh, take the book and just scan their barcode. Book will be automatically issued from the member's account. Now here is the option in the checkout. Here, see, careful check-in option you have to activate. By default, checkout is activated. So check in here, you have to activate. Enter that B103 and just enter. We have time is very short now. So book is returned now. From this account, this Mishra, this uh, detail, it is displaying here. So this is about check-in, check-out. Member entry already I shown you. It's a very uh, simple. Just you go to the pattern module and just enter the records. It's a very simple. 
So simply in a periodical, actually uh, uh, what we are doing period in a serial, actually generally we are hard, nowadays the people are library is also stopping purchasing of the hard copy. But in a serial generally our purpose is to uh, make a schedule and receive as and when the book, uh, that journal arrived inside the library. Uh, we are actually receiving that one. Just function theoretically, I am telling you that you can just make the schedule automatic. So what will happen? Uh, actually, whenever in a register also, if somebody is using that manual method, then they have prepared one register. And then uh, some pages has is already allocated or earlier we were using the Cardex system. So whenever the issue is arriving, just we are alphabetical through alphabetical arrangement, Cardex was there. Or in your register, small libraries, the, the people are preparing the register in alphabetical order. And whenever uh, that journal magazines arrive, they open that page or cardex and then just simply mentioning that the volume number this, accession number this, um, that issue number this arrived. Or if next time it is uh, some, uh, in spite of uh, arriving second issue, third issue we receive. We are sending reminded for the reminder for the second issue and making entry of the third one. So in Koha, automatically we can make that schedule. And then um, suppose 12 issues are there, then what we can do, uh, like Times of India, suppose or India Today, 12 issue, we can make it volume 10 and 1. It will automatically show you volume 10, January, February, March up to 12. Now, simply what you have to do it, uh, simply whenever that issue arrived, you just go and check that box and receive it. So that is the function of actually serial module that is also available. And then tool, it is helpful for actually doing any bulk modification and then customization of your, this OPEC interface also. You can modify this one to this tool HTML option. So he Koha customization, you see HTML customization, the option is there. And inside that, if you know HTML or CSS, then you can change this, your entire uh, OPEC look and feel, colors, and you can assign any of that uh, links and all those things through this module. Here, suppose I wanted to change, change, give some name, my central library, I will save it and it, it should look here in a header, part my central library. So this is customization you can do. Just I shown you it is possible how it is how you can make it possible through the available options. Now you see this my central library. So it depends upon HTML, CSS how how much you know how much you can customize so that is also possible here through this tools module and then um, barcodes and all those things you can generate barcode even pattern cards and any kind of bulk modifications like um, suppose you wanted to write a thousand book then simultaneously you can do with the help of tool module not that manually you have to write off uh, one by one 
so this kind of option is there here in a e resource actually basically uh, two things are there in electronic resource management generally option they have given suppose we are buying library a big library are buying the packages for example in lgv are 1000 books uh, journals we are buying and then we are um, um, keeping our uh, agreement related document or any other licensed document uh, in a place but people don't know okay, how much actually in a particular package we are buying the journal. Suppose some while a journal, we are only buying one package, only 20 titles are there, agreements are there. So for that purpose, actually they have made this uh, option that you can agreement, you can actually upload, license you can upload here and package, you can define in this particular package how many titles are there. So it will remain in your Koha database. As and when required, you can check what is this package and how many titles are there and as i told you statistics you can generate with this uh, feature e usage for this actually you ne you need to have your api that you can ask from your publisher they will uh, actually give you that api etc and that you will you have to de define here so as and when required you can generate that electronic resource usage statistics so this is actually in uh, very brief about koha and um, that uh, Ajayji, now uh, I think I should uh, stop here. And hello. 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 Yes, sir. 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 Or sir, question, if they wanted to ask anything, they can yeah. right okay. now. Because there is, it is endless. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So any parchment now, uh, if you want to see every option now, nowadays Koha is most popular. Everybody is aware. I need not to convince anyone to use the Koha because it is uh, now there is no scene to convince. There is no question to convince the people. And I think there is no question also about it. It's a best one. And you can uh, actually um, blindly you can use it either directly or through community support or through availing any commercial vendor support so this one um, actually a lot of report features are also there and then wiki pages are there so uh, a lot of community supports are there sql report you can actually uh, <clears throat> define so here create your sql report So, <laughs> Susanto has one question. So, uh, yes. Susanto has raised one question in chat box. How to set up email alert for overdue notice automatically? Uh, that for that actually uh, report from here you see the SQL report this is the link actually and uh, you will find here that SQL those persons who are not aware about SQL 
they can see here, they can read here, different, different, that nomenclature is given, that title. If this report is for what? List of current periodical and their holding. If um, salt borrower, direct link, suppose list of current periodical and their holding, suppose would they, anybody want to generate the report. So this SQL report, you have to copy here and then you have to come here and paste inside the bay, this box and save it. So permanently as and when required, you can generate that kind of report. So this is the report link here already and you can come on this side and you can check what are the reports available. Almost all report is available. Now I am coming to uh, what he asked about the question that email. Yes. So email. for email also actually very first requirement is uh, that uh, you should have at least one Gmail account. And from Gmail account, I, now I will show you, you just Google it because documentation are so strong that you will find that all the documents are very uh, friendly documents are available. Koha, email, Gmail, configurations I have given in a Google, in a very uh, graphical, actually, uh, uh, graphical, uh, user-friendly, uh, user it will, a uh, lot of documents you can able to see here. Set up, you see, Koha email configuration, set up SMTP server without or something they have written. You see, you open anyone. So in a Koha new security, in a Gmail new security feature are there, dual authentication you have to activate and then uh, web app, app uh, password you have to generate and then able to, and then you have to store it into the Koha system. Now you see email configuration. See how gra graphically some uh, that Taxicon vendor has given this. So this option you have to see, you can just correlate it. Now I'm coming to here, then administrator. Now what it is telling is that you have to go to Gmail, Gmail app, you have to first create. App password created in Gmail, that is related to Gmail. And now how to create the app password in Gmail, all the information is given here or that also you can Google and find out. Now you see SMTP is given here. According to that, see SMTP. So how user friendly are there? I also actually, I'm not always remembering everything. So as and when required, I search the Google and find the documents and then accordingly I follow the document and work is done. So in that way, I think the document is already there. So if you are not able to do it practically, you may call me always. So I will help you if you are doing. So these are the documents. In that way, you can configure the email. So I think basic thing uh, we have already con uh, covered. And uh, that uh, Ajay, you, uh, you can share my pass with that uh, mobile number also to the participant and inform them as and when they need any help, uh, they are always free to talk to me. Okay, sure, sir. So next question from Ali Velu Nanga, how to add multimedia file with different extensions? Multimedia file? So, uh, multimedia file with different extensions. How to add multimedia files with different ex extensions? Achha, he is talking about in cataloging. Yes, sir, I think, sir. Uh, so actually, see that, uh, yes, recently um, that um, um, Koha has added some feature, you can catalog that one also. So I think one option is there already to upload that uh, um, uh, file. So I don't know ki, uh, what is his purpose to ask because uh, in PDF files, it is a PDF file, we, it, we can up upload the PDF, then definitely we can upload that uh, uh, any of the file. I think there should not be a limitation with the uh, extensions. If it is there, then we have to see. Otherwise, it's a cataloging and under cataloging, there is an option to upload a, um, that a document or file, whatever they, they wanted to upload. Okay. In a Koha. I think, the, I think the space, this is a problem. He might be asking about the space. But D space, it is a problem. They have to configure somewhere. 
So in a Koha, there is an option somewhere uh, that after entering of data, I think in 800 or somewhere, one uh, will, uh, that information he can uh, infield that browse and just simply uh, upload that. It will be document will be uploaded over the server. I think there is no issue at all in Koha. So next question is from V Mallika. How to proceed for retro conversion of the database from currently using software to code? Achha, that is a long process. And actually, you have to first, if it is a mark compatible, then you export your data in a mark. If it is not, then you convert it into the Excel, download your, if that software is allowing, you download it in an Excel format, then convert it into the mark with the help of available tool like mark edit. And then uh, you install your Koha and then uh, you have to do a lot of work. It's not a simple one. So you should know that uh, mark tagging, Koha, you have to um, actually configure Koha before the import. And basic thing is if you are able to export the data in Excel, then you can convert very easily into the mark with the help of any community support people. I am also helping people and other people and documents are also available. But first thing is ki you should have your data either in Excel format or in a mark format. If that data you have, then easily you can migrate it. So thank you very much to all. Ajay ji. Uh, yes, sir. I think there is no more questions, sir. If you have any question, please, please you may ask or write in the chat box. I think uh, the next question is what about the email configuration? Already, already I discussed. Mm -hmm. You just Google it. Okay, how to configure uh, email in Koha. You will find the document. Like you see here, all the documents you will find. <coughs> the phone number of Dr. Vinod Mishra has been given in the chat box. If you have any doubt for any clarification, for any help, you may uh, contact with him. He will help you. Okay. Okay, Ajay ji, huh? should I wind up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think there is no more question from participant side. So we can wind up the session here. So thank you very much, sir, for uh, accepting our invitation and uh, given the, uh, this uh, deliberation on Koha with the practical hands-on. Even uh, it is not possible to cover, uh, even in a day, even we can uh, continue this Koha to a week-long uh, workshop. But... Uh, uh, I don't know how we have managed with the two sessions, sir. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Thank, thank, you, thank you for you the much. opportunity. And um, uh, as and when required, you or any of the participants may contact me. Huh? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? I am just uh, leaving okay, this. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir.